I'm Liz. I'm from the Brooklyn Biscuit Company, and I'm also the HR Director at Cook. Today, we're going to make salted buttermilk biscuits. Now, I'm the owner of the Brooklyn Biscuit Company, so salted buttermilk biscuits are my signature biscuit. So I'm going to need to show you all the things that you need in order to make them. First, let's start with, we have flour, we have baking powder, baking soda, we have a little bit of sea salt, I have lemon juice inside here, this is milk, these are eggs, and this is butter, it's all chopped up. What I usually use is buttermilk. And now, I know not everybody has buttermilk in their house, so the best thing to do is to add a little lemon to some milk, and it'll make it curdle, and it will also activate the baking powder. So that's what we're gonna do today. And then, we need utensils. We need a lot of them. We have a fork, we have some measuring spoons, a big spoon, a wooden spoon, and have a biscuit cutter. Now, if you don't have a biscuit cutter, you don't need to have a, 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 a round biscuit cutter like this. What you could use instead is you could use the top of a glass. You could just cut out those biscuits that way. And I have another measuring cup, and then I have a pastry cutter. Now, a pastry cutter has all these little slits in it. And what this does is it cuts all this butter into the flour and cuts it up really small so you can get those biscuits nice and flaky. You need a bowl, you need a pan with some parchment paper on it. If you don't have parchment paper, that's okay because you can put a little butter on it and it'll be fine. And then we set our oven to 400. And that's gonna heat up while we start making the biscuits. All right, first I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get two cups of flour. Great. And then we're going to use our baking powder. The baking powder is really important because this is what's going to help make it rise. And we just need one tablespoon. Now, I like to add a little baking soda in mine. So I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of baking soda. I'm going to add a little sprinkle of salt in here. And I say a pinch. When I say a pinch, you put your fingers in there and give it a good pinch and then put it in there. That's what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to take my fork. I'm going to stir up all those dry ingredients just so they get all incorporated inside. Now, I'm going to take one egg, crack it, and I'm just going to whip it up a little bit. Just because I like to get the egg yolk and the egg white mixed together, I'm going to take one tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm going to pour it into the milk and stir it up a little bit and let that sit and let that sit. Here's the fun part. We've got our flour. Now you've got your butter. I chopped it up in little tiny pieces and I did that so it gets a little head start because once I put it into the flour, I wanted to mix it into the flour before I put in any of the wet ingredients so that it feels like little pebbles inside there. Now right now they're big, big, big chunks, but I want them to feel like little pebbles. So I'm gonna put all my butter in here and how I get that to happen is with my pastry cutter. And I chop. And I mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it until it's done. And as you're doing this, you have to really work it into the flour so that it gets really incorporated. This is where your muscles come into play here because this butter is nice and cold. That's one thing that you want to do. You want to get it nice and cold because if it gets too warm, it starts to melt into the flour and you don't want that to happen because then it gets all mushy and you don't want your dough to be mushy. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do it with your hands. You put your fingers in there and you rub. And this way it gets really mixed into the flour really, really well. 
Now a nice shortcut. So you put these, put these two things in a food presser and just pulse a couple of times. That'll really make the butter very small and perfect. You can see that the butter is really mixed into the flour. And you don't want big hunks of butter. It's nice to have a little bit every now and then, but you don't want that butter to turn into a big pool of, of melted butter inside your biscuits and they were not gonna rise. This actually helps them rise. All right, now, if you see the milk is kind of curdled a little bit, you could see that, that's because of the lemon juice. And that is really good. Now that acid is gonna really make these rise up high. We're gonna make a little well in the middle. So I'm not gonna put all this in. This is about a cup. I'm just gonna put a, about half of it for now. And then I'm gonna add my egg. I'm gonna stir that up. I don't know if you can see this pretty well, but it's starting to pull together. You know, you really want to not over mix biscuits. That's what the big thing about this is. You just want them just to get enough liquid in there so that it pulls together. Okay, now you get to get use your hands. I put a little flour on my hands. All right, now I'm gonna pull all this together. And if your hands get a little sticky, that's okay. That's the fun of it. Now what I'm doing now is I'm mushing it all together and that's called kneading it. Now I'm not kneading it too much, not like you make bread or anything like that, but I'm just pulling all the dry bits into the biscuit dough so that it looks like this. See how it's pulling away? And you see, I didn't add all of this. Although the recipe calls for all the milk, I didn't use it all because I didn't need to. So you always have to be aware of that. But some days you need it. On hot, humid days, you might not need it. On cold, rainy days, you might need it. I mean, that's just the way it is with baking. All right, what I'm doing now, I put a little flour down, and then I put my dough down. I'm gonna press this out. Now, this is my very scientific method. I press it out till about two fingers. Now, the two fingers is my guide. And I push it out for two fingers all the way around. You see, that looks pretty good. All right. Now, I take my cutter, I dip it inside some flour just to, so it doesn't stick, and then I cut. And if you notice, I didn't twist. All I did was push down and pull up. Push down, pull up. All right, look, I got four biscuits. And then I'm gonna take these scrap dough and I'm just gonna push it together gently. I'm not really gonna touch it too much. Get that flour on there so it doesn't stick. And then push it out, that's it. And then dip it, cut, and cut. Okay, now we have this little scrap here. I love scraps because what I do with my scraps is I make tiny biscuits. I make a little teeny tiny one. And how I do that, I just cut it around the edge. Now I'm cutting it on the edge. The reason why I do that is because it gets a nice rise. Because if I left it just like this, you see how it's all tight there and closed up because I've been pinching it? I don't want that. I want it to cut. <gasps> see, you can see where it's cut. So I'm gonna break this little teeny one. And what I'm gonna do now, this is what I do. I take a little bit of buttermilk with a little bit of the leftover egg. I swish it together. And I dip my fingers in it and I brush the tops.
And I, I do this so that they have a nice golden top. And then what it also does is it holds the salt because I add a little salt topping on mine just to make them a little bit crunchy. I sprinkle a little sea salt. I think sea salt is the best. It tastes not heavy sodium. And there you go. So now, I'm just gonna put these in the oven. All right, so the biscuits are done. They look pretty good. I'm very pleased with them. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut one open. You can see all those flakes. See how nice and flaky they are. Ah, there you go. Yum. I'm gonna put a little strawberry butter on mine. I really like that. Strawberry butter is just absolute my favorite. And then also, I also love, love, love this particular jam. Strawberry rhubarb jam. That's crazy good. I have one with strawberry butter and one with strawberry rhubarb jam. Oh, this looks amazing. All right, I'm gonna try this one first. All right, enjoy. Hope yours turn out nice. I'm sure they will. Bon appetit.